Hello, hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to Unraveled, where we take gorgeous geekery and turn it into questionable crafts. Today, we're communing with the nature spirits that help the plants grow. That's right, we're crocheting Totoro. First things first, we need to give a disembodied Totoro a body. The idea I have in my head is that Totoro's body is a big, slightly squished bean covered in fluffy stuff. I'm starting with a trusty magic ring. No, not that kind of ring. I've double crocheted six times into it so we can begin crocheting in the round in continuous spirals. I increase every round six times to make a disc of doom, a forbidden frisbee if you will. I like to start with the body so I can get the rest of the features and details proportional. So it hopefully ends up looking somewhat recognisable, but we'll see. After the circular saucer gets to 54 stitches, I've switched to increasing every third round for nine rounds. This is to give Totoro's wholesome bean body that squished look. Kinda like a barrel bard. I want Totoro to look adorably squishable, so without these increases every third round, Totoro would look more like the tall fall guy skin, and that's just terrifying. Now I'm at the halfway point of Totoro's body, I now need to do exactly what I've done already, but reverse it. Now I'm up to Totoro's furry booty, and I realised if I'd done exactly the same as I had already done but in reverse, their booty would be too thick. So I added in some crochet into the back loops to flatten that cake. Forbidden candy floss. Although Totoro is sweet enough already. As with all my amigurumi, they're being stuffed with 100% high loft polyester. Then once it's stuffed, we can give it a little wiggle to redistribute all the stuffing and make sure it's even. Before I crochet up the bum flap, I'm making Totoro's soft sole patch, their tummy fuzz. When it looked pretty much the right size, I crocheted another round and ruined it. That got unraveled. One of the reasons why I don't like crocheting into a single stitch to start crocheting in the round is because you can end up with these holes. I'll fix those later when I come to embroider it. Time for the crochet equivalent of taking an anti-diuretic, it's time to crochet up the bum to stop the insides from falling out. Here I'm decreasing six times every round, keeping my finger between Steve, my trusty steed, and the stuffing. I don't want to catch the stuffing in the stitches so Totoro doesn't end up with more fluff down there than he should have. Now we can test out Totoro's squishiness by redistributing the fluff and, you know, making sure they're cuddly enough. Okie doke, right, now it's on to the fiddly bits. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm not ready. Eyes are the windows to the soul, unless they're made of yarn, and then they're windows to the sheep. Another magic ring starts off the eyes, and then it's just one increase round before we fasten off and look at those glorious peepers. Peepers do generally come in pairs, so I have made a second one, don't you worry. Hey, what do you call an everyday potato? A commentator. Next on a plan that's not really a plan, plan. Totoro needs some hugging apparatus. I notice that their arms are flat on the claw end and then they taper up towards the shoulder. So to get the flat end, I'm chaining 20 stitches and then joining them in a boring old normal ring. And then I can crochet up to the shoulder. Having never started crochet in this way before by making a chain, it took me a little time to do the join. So after a few minutes and giving my fingers a stern talking to to get them back in line, we managed to join it. The increases are exactly the same as the tummy increases, except I only increased twice and then decreased in the same way as well. Later on, I will stuff the arms and then crochet up the hole so then the whole arm is kind of self-contained and then we can pin it in place and sew it on. Totoro has two arms that we know of, so I have crocheted a spare as well. You can probably tell I was quite pleased with it. <laughs> Although they do kind of look like bunny ears rather than arms, but you know. Although after that I realised that I'd forgot to leave a long tail for sewing. Oops, oh sorry I wasn't listening, but now I'm all ears. These are simplified versions of Totoro's ears, mainly because I forgot that they were supposed to be arrow shaped. They look like tiny mittens so you can have a round of applause, you're doing great. 
All the bits and pieces look like butterfly wings here. Fly away! The devil is in the detail, or so they say, and I have no idea what that means. I'm presuming it's because his horns get stuck in the stitches. Before I sew the belly floof onto the belly bean, I am embroidering the arrows. And as promised, I'm sewing up the whole course by the chain. Now we're at a point where we can literally pull the whole thing together. And coincidentally, an awesome song came on, so please excuse me while I do a little dance. First, the belly gets sewn on because then I can use it as a center point to position the rest of his features. Of course, that does mean I have to turn Totoro into a pincushion first. I don't pin pieces together all the time, although I really should, but I'm really clumsy and I usually end up stabbing myself with the pins or they get caught in the stitches. And sometimes it ends up being in a location I didn't pin it to in the first place, so yeah. <laughs> Though the flat pieces don't move, they can sometimes end up a bit irregular around the edges. My sewing technique's a bit up and down. I go between the stitches on the bottom piece and then I go into the edge stitch of the top piece from front to back. Then it's pretty much a rinse and repeat. Once we're done, we can then relieve Totoro of their pins and needles. Then I finish it off by poking the tail end into the body so that it is hidden, but still has some extra length just in case it comes undone. That shouldn't happen, but wear and tear, so just in case. Well, I'll be darned, it doesn't look half bad. La la la, can't hear you, I'm stuffing my ears. <laughs> they were slightly too small for me to stick any digit in there, so I'm using the end of my crochet hook to stuff the ears. The ears then get pinned in place and sewn on. This is one of the times where the ears did not end up where I pinned them. So the ears end up coming out a little bit wonky, but maybe wait to the end and see how they turn out and let me know what you think. I spent so much time pinning them perfectly in position as well. <laughs> but sewing is harder than it seems, I guess. <laughs> I use the same technique to sew on the ears as well, going between the stitches on the bottom piece and then into the edge stitches of the ears. It's beginning to look recognisable now. Time for a little Totoro CPR to breathe some life into them. I couldn't decide whether I should sew the top and the bottom of the arms through the body so they didn't stick out as much, but then I got distracted and I never did. Oh, look a butterfly. I pinned the arms in position where I thought they looked right, slightly towards the back and roughly in the same general location on each side. They pass the eyeball test anyway. <laughs> I don't really have a particular sewing technique for sewing on things like arms. I just add stitches until they're secure and it looks a right mess. But yeah, yeah don't don't get that close. Don't get that close. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Totoro does look like he's about to start a pillow fight with death though. But they should be wary of the reaper cushions. <laughs> One of the final details are the claws. I made these by picking up one stitch, chaining three, and then fastening off. The weaving in of the claw tail ends took forever. <laughs> I mean, six times six is a lot, apparently. Oh, I, maths not thing do now. <laughs> Thank you so so much for watching whether you're a girl a guy non-binary hi or just passing by i appreciate you lovely people being here and i'll see you next time for more unraveled chaos